My fiance's crazy entitled father is actively trying to ruin our marriage. And after dealing with this for literally over two years, I have finally put my foot down and said enough is enough. And now I'm seriously considering not getting married after my fiance refused to set any kind of boundary with his crazy father. Here's what happened. I want to start off by saying that our wedding is in three weeks. To make a long story short, his dad has been trying to destroy our marriage from the very beginning and has left no stone unturned trying to do so. It has been a nightmare, an absolute nightmare for me, my family, and my fiance because of this person. He is a clinical narcissist. He's awful. He's a liar. He's crazy manipulative, probably mentally ill, and truly a bad man. Not a single positive trait that I can think of. He bribes clergymen to lie to my fiance, to make up fake scriptures to support his sick desires of splitting us up. His family all agrees with my assessment, and he makes their lives absolutely miserable. He is against our marriage due to his obsession with control and continuously trying to split us up, but it still hasn't worked. But here's where the real issue comes along. My fiance is very much toxically bonded to this man. He used to look up to him as a role model, always says that he would do anything for him, panders to his every manipulative need. This was the first time in my life my fiance did something against his dad's will, so it's the first time he's ever seen things get this bad. The problem is he won't set a single boundary. He allows the man to berate him for hours and hours on the phone even though they're in different countries. It has literally been two years of this. He constantly hears himself get called a traitor, a bad son, a pathetic doormat, so many other things that are just not true. His dad says so many horrible things and he implies that he'll do awful things to himself if we go through with this wedding, if you know what I mean. And here's the thing, when me and the rest of the family say that he needs to put some distance between himself and and his dad, he just says, no, that's my dad. My fiance takes all of this to heart terribly, even though everyone tells him none of it is true, and that he's done nothing wrong. I mean, I do not recognize my fiance anymore. He used to be strong and confident and happy, and now he's just miserable. He uses illegal substances. He lies to me. He barely functions as a human being. His only object is pleasing his dad, which all of us knows is impossible because the man is mentally ill and doesn't respond to any kind of reason. I mean, we have all tried in that regard. I brought this to his attention and said that you're destroying our marriage before we even move in together. But he'll respond by saying, oh, but that's my dad. And then he'll refuse to do anything about it. We are not happy anymore. Absolutely everything revolves around that psychopath. I don't know how much more I can take. I can be supportive, but not when he's allowing this to happen. I told him I don't recognize him anymore and I'm terrified to have our wedding and move in with him because he refuses to set a very reasonable boundary and protect himself and his marriage. He says to me, well, my dad isn't berating you, so it's fine. But I'm like, do you really not see how messed up our marriage is? All because of how much you allow him to berate you? For the record, he has also berated me in the past, but I stayed quiet out of respect for my fiance. It's like talking to a wall. He refuses therapy. His mom and siblings all see this for what it is and encourage him to put some distance. But we always just get the same response. I'm honestly at a loss right now. I feel guilty to leave him after all this, but these are terrifying signs. I cannot help him if he won't help himself, which is what is happening right now. We are currently not speaking to each other because I said either you change something or I'm out of here. What should I do? This is a massive red flag. The dad in this situation absolutely should be out of your life. And the fact that your fiance can't see that is crazy to me. Like seriously, how can your fiance not see that this is real? ruining your marriage. Why on earth would he choose his awful dad over his soon-to-be wife? Like, this is seriously just not okay, and you do not deserve this in the slightest. Like, seriously, if I was in your shoes, and I'm only speaking for myself here, and I knew that my wedding was three weeks away, and my fiancé was acting like this, there is no way on earth I would ever go forward with a wedding. Like, seriously, your fiancé is not ready to get married. They are more concerned with their crazy father than they are about preserving your marriage. And that, in my opinion, is a massive red flag and I definitely think that you deserve a lot better. If you like Am I the Jerk, you're probably going to love Am I the Genius. Check it out, link down below in the description. Also, go to amithejerk.com slash submit if you would like to submit your own stories. My sister and her husband never punish their kids, allowing them to run rampant around anybody's house that they go to, as well as blatantly refusing to listen to anybody. And after dealing with this for so long, I finally had had enough and decided 
decided to open up and tell her exactly how I feel. And now, as a result, she is calling me a jerk and saying that I shouldn't have talked to her kids in that way. But despite it all, I'm being commended by my family for finally saying exactly what everyone wanted to say for several years now. And I'm now just hoping that my sister will finally get the message. Here's what happened. So I'm an 18-year-old female, and I have an older sister who's 31 years old, who is married with two kids. One of the kids is 8 years old, and the other is 5. Ever since my niece and nephew were young, they were spoiled silly, and would throw a tantrum in order to get what they wanted. My sister, being the oldest in the family, would never say no, and on the off occasion that she did, my niece and nephew would cry and scream until my sister gave in and got them whatever expensive gift they wanted. A few years ago, my sister had gotten them iPads, and ever since, they've been glued to them, and if you took it away or it lost its charge, then they would throw a fit. My niece and nephew have no regard for anyone's feelings and have gotten to a stage where they will outright tell people that you are not my mom and I'm not listening to you. Or they'll say something like, I don't need to do what you tell me to do. This honestly causes my family to be annoyed on several occasions. Now, don't get me wrong. I love them with all of my heart. But the way they speak and act towards family and friends is downright rude. And my sister doesn't punish them for it. She encourages it, saying they're young and we shouldn't get mad at kids. My nephew has a knack for picking on his sister, especially when he has a friend over, which leads to my niece crying and seeking comfort, which is understandable, but she retaliates by acting out. Whenever they visit the house, they will run around and cause a mess while yelling and screaming. They refuse to eat food my parents make if they don't want it and will talk back to my parents with no hesitation. My niece also has a problem with stealing. If she sees something she likes, she will literally just take it. And on one occasion, I found her in my room looking through my drawers and picking out clothing. And I had a handful of old stuffed teddies and when I softly explained to her that she couldn't do that, she ran off and my sister got mad at me for punishing her, even though I didn't. It all came to a boiling point when my nephew and niece were jumping around in my younger sister's room and yelling at her. I walked into the room and I asked what was going on and they looked at me and said, we don't love you, you aren't our mom, which genuinely hurt. So when I told my sister, she said to let them be and that they don't mean it. From the corner of my eye, I saw my niece standing there with a grin on her face and she just ran off, leaving me very hurt and very angry. Now, I don't know what came over me next, but I let out everything that I had kept bottled up, saying things that my family never dared to say, and finished it by saying, your kids are the devil's spawn, and I suggest you start punishing them for how they act. And then I just left for my room, which is where I'm sitting right now. So honestly, am I the jerk in this scenario? What should I do? Before we go any further, the original poster actually has an update for us. Here's what they had to say. Well, my sister came over this morning to talk to me, but instead of it being a conversation, it was more of her yelling at me for disrespecting her kids. I sat and listened for what felt like hours of screaming, and once she finished, she told me to grow up and that my kids are good kids. When I heard that, it was like a wave of anger washed over me, and I honestly told her that her kids don't respect me, the family, or the house. The family prides themselves on respecting each other, but she has failed to teach them respect and manners and that I shouldn't open my door to see my niece stealing from me. I apologize for the wording I used to refer to the kids, but also reiterated that if it wasn't going to be me to tell her the truth, then it would be somebody else. My sister then looked at me and said, you're not a mother, so you can't judge my parenting, which is true, but I had to tell her that even though I'm not a mother, I can't just sit aside and watch my niece and nephew grow up to be disrespectful people because if they're willing to be rude and mean towards their own family, then what's going to happen to them when they enter the real world or go to school every single day? I can't help but worry for my niece and nephew because they are getting worse and I don't want them to just do nothing and that my sister and her husband need to be held accountable for their actions. I also reminded her that if she was only here to yell at me, then that shows me where the children got their disrespectful attitude from and I suggest that she try new tactics like teaching them that stealing is wrong and to do things like limiting screen time and learning to say no to them. She looked at me with disgust and finally left. The entire family is on my side in the situation and have commended me on telling my sister what they all have been wanting to say. But I feel like my sister will never listen nor change, especially for her children. Yeah, that older sister has clearly been lazy when it comes to raising her kids. Clearly those kids run that house and not the other way around. The kids have learned from an early age that if they scream and cry, they will get whatever they want. And so 
now that that's an established behavior in their house, they then feel like it's okay to do that at other people's houses. And that is seriously inappropriate. It really doesn't take much to simply say no to your kid and teach them some decent manners growing up. I'm not saying it doesn't take work. Don't get me wrong. Of course, it's going to take a lot of work to make sure that they're good kids. But I really believe if you put the effort in, they really will start to listen to you and other people around them. Because otherwise, you're going to end up like this older sister. And that would honestly be awful to deal with on a daily basis. My entitled father is demanding information about me, despite the fact that I cut him off years ago. And now that I finally have moved on from this man, I truly feel happy about my decision, and I really hope I never have to deal with him ever again. Here's what happened. Okay, so for a bit of background, when my brother and I were four and five years old, my dad threw me, my brother, and our mom out on Christmas after I told my mom about spending time at his girlfriend's house, and she followed up and realized it was true. When I was seven, he disappeared altogether because his girlfriend didn't like my brother and I, and he didn't like paying child support. He came back when we were 12 and 13 years old, respectively, and he took my mom to court where he asked for visitation rights. We soon found out it was because his new girlfriend had a kid and she wanted visitations so that his child support would go down or ideally go away. After having to spend time with him, I learned that although he has this weird hatred for people that he considers rich, he himself wants to be a millionaire. When I was 17 years old, I was done with having to deal with him, and I was pretty mad that my mom agreed to sending us to visitations when it was very clear I wanted no part of it, and the judge would give her the option to stop them. The icing on the cake was when I was using my mom's phone one day to get some information, and I saw my dad texting her. I opened their messages, and I saw that he was asking her for school pictures of my brother and I, and he was asking her why I was so stubborn about letting him into my life, or letting him know anything about me. She told him to ask me herself and agreed to send him pictures, but to not have them anywhere I could see them because I was pretty scary when I was mad. I called him and ended visitations for myself, and my brother was 16 and not nearly as opinionated as me. As we got older, my brother stayed in touch with him, despite constantly telling me that he's a pathetic loser, that his life is sad, and that he's a waste of time. But with that in mind, I made sure to never let him have any contact with me at all. He would occasionally ask my brother for updates about me, and I made sure that my brother had it down to tell him either that if he wants to know anything about me, he can ask me himself, or that that's classified information, and that he doesn't have the right security clearance to access that knowledge. Dad would then get angry and say something like, I'm your father, and you need to respect me, and if I ask to know anything, I expect to be told what I want to know. There was one instance in particular where my dad and half-brother were messaging my brother back-to-back, and it was kind of odd. They both both asked about me, and my brother told our half-brother he can always text me directly if he really wants to ask me anything. But you know what? He never did. But my dad was persistent on my brother giving him any information on me at all. I told my brother that if he wanted to know what city I moved to so badly, and what I was doing, to tell him a city kind of close to me, but still is a ways away, that is home to quite a few celebrities, and that I work a job to support my ability to live there. Knowing that my dad hates rich people, and that he would look up the city, I knew this was a surefire way to get him to stop asking anything about me. Well, my brother told him, and sure enough, he acted quite predictably. He was angry, bitter, and jealous. And he even uninvited my brother from the weekly dinners that they apparently had been having. I did end up seeing my dad at my grandmother's funeral two years ago, and this is because she wanted him there as one of her last wishes, and both my mom and brother warned him to not try and talk to me. He did listen to their warning, but ever since then, my dad has occasionally thrown out that he has baby pictures of mine that were thought to have been destroyed when he threw us out. We were not allowed to take more than what would fit into one backpack each. My brother would ask for them, and now my dad responds to him by saying, you will be allowed one bad quality picture for every time your brother apologizes to me for shutting me out. One good quality picture for every 10 minutes your brother spends on the phone explaining to me why he felt like he needs to treat me the way he does. And one small album of exact copies you will have to pay to make if you make your brother agree to meet with me in person, apologize to me for his disrespect, and tells me how to stay in contact with him because I should be allowed that access. When my brother told myself and my mom in a group chat, my mom replied by saying that she doesn't need baby pictures that bad. The memories are good enough. And I just said, wow, well it sucks for you guys, you won't get to see me as a baby. It's been a little while
while now since my brother mentioned anything to me, but I know they talk since my mom told me recently that my dad texted my brother on my birthday to wish him a happy birthday. My brother's birthday is three days before mine, and my dad has never tried to remember how old we are or what day our birthdays are. But honestly, I'm so glad he's not in my life, and I truly hope I never deal with him ever again. Your dad seriously sounds awful. Like, he's verbally and emotionally awful, and he's really manipulative. Like, this guy clearly only wants you in his life, so he can have some semblance of control over your life. Like, that's the only motivation this guy has. He's not genuinely interested in what you're doing. He doesn't care about where your life is going or what's going on inside of it. He just wants to know information about you so that he can try and have some kind of wiggle room to ruin your life even more. Like, this guy kicked his family out of his house after it got exposed that he was cheating on his wife. Like, this guy is a complete loser through and through. And I don't blame you for cutting him off. And you know what? The fact that you're not responding to this guy after all the years of awful behavior he's had towards you and your brother, that alone has got to be driving him nuts. If he's anything like other narcissists that I've met in my own life, I'm willing to assume that you ignoring him is literally just driving him up a wall. Because you know what? He probably wants some kind of reaction. He wants you to get upset at him so he can have more reasons to hate you and your brother. Like, this guy is not a good person, and if he really wanted you in his life, he should have cleaned up his act years ago. Because as it stands right now, you don't owe this man a single thing. And I know if I was in your shoes, I would probably react the exact same way. Am I the jerk for not changing my dog's name when I find out that my new neighbor's child has the exact same name? Here's what happened. So I'm the owner of a mixed cattle dog by the name of Charlotte. I live in a lower middle class suburb in the United States. I have lived here for almost a year now, and I let Charlotte out to go potty roughly six or so times a day. It's always the same routine. I open the back door, Charlotte runs outside to go to the bathroom and then patrol the yard, and doesn't typically come bounding back to the door until I poke my head out and call her name. Well, about a week or two ago, maybe longer if I didn't notice, new neighbors moved in across my back alley. I had no intentions of interacting with them whatsoever, and I mean like ever. But all of that changed when I was executing the last step of Charlotte's aforementioned potty protocol. I stuck my head out and called her name, but this time, alongside the familiar sounds of my dog galloping up to the porch steps, was an adult human shouting something back at me. They were screaming, Why are you calling my daughter? Now, at first, I thought it might just be my new neighbors getting into an argument, until a couple minutes later, I heard pounding on my front door. I opened the door to an angry man about twice my size glaring down at me. He said something like, Why in the world are you calling my daughter into your house? And I responded by saying, Is your daughter's name Charlotte? And when I said that, he just kind of kept glaring at me. In absence of a response, I followed up by saying, Dude, Charlotte is my dog's name. This guy then rolled his eyes at me and said that I better change my dog's name because he doesn't want his daughter getting confused and running into my house. I told him that's not going to happen because not only did my dog have the name first, but we also lived here first. Plus, I don't like strangers making demands of me before even attempting to be polite. What I didn't say, but I really wanted to say, is that teaching his child stranger danger is his responsibility and definitely not mine. Well, this guy then called me stupid and said that a human child obviously has priority over a dog for a name. I then shut the door in his face and stared at him through the peephole for a moment before he eventually walked back to his house. Well, this last potty break, I went out with Charlotte and stayed in the yard with her until she finished her business. But this guy just kind of stood in his yard with his arms crossed and glared at me the entire time. So honestly, I need to know, am I the jerk in this situation for choosing not to change my dog's name just to please my new neighbor? No, you are not the jerk. This guy sounds crazy. First of all, the odds of that stupid kid having the same name as your dog is literally slim to none. Like, think about it. That's crazy that that actually happened. But also, how can this guy honestly think for a second that you somehow know his daughter's name even though you've never talked to this guy or his stupid kid ever in your life? Like, this guy just moved in and he's already causing so many problems for you. And he definitely made like a veiled threat against your dog. He literally said, oh, you better change that dog's name. You better do it. It's like, what are you talking about? I'm not doing that. The dog's not going to listen to anything besides the name Charlotte. Trying to change it now would be a nightmare to figure out. And there's no way I would ever want to put up with that. Also, this guy has to be a really bad parent if he thinks his daughter is going to run into your house. For context, his stupid kid is two years old. And that really makes me think, why would this guy leave his two-year-old daughter outside with no adult supervision? This guy 
basically just admitted that he sucks at being a parent, and he's now expecting the original poster to dance around his incapabilities. So I know if I was in your shoes, I would get cameras like yesterday and set it up all over my house and outside my property. This guy definitely sounds like someone who would try to hurt your dog, and I definitely would make every step necessary to make sure that that never happens. When you subscribe, make sure to hit the bell to turn on notifications. To finish listening to all the stories, check out the playlist at the top of the description. And if you want some chill music to put on in the background, check out Easy Mode. If you like Am I the Jerk, subscribe to Am I the Genius. Everything will be linked down below in the description.